we are here at the Georgia Aquarium and we are going to have some fun with some amazing animals. I'm Dave Salmoni for Animal Planet and these are your Animal Bites. What? Yeah. So do you want to hold this guy? I do want to hold this guy. Oh my God, that is so cute. Yeah, nice and gentle. Yep. Oh my, how old are these? These guys are just over three weeks old. Yep. Three week old African penguin. I have a, a one year old and a three year old. Okay. What are the difference between you know raising one of these and raising a? Well, these guys are pretty similar to babies, right? So when they first hatch out of the egg, they're completely helpless. Their eyes are closed. They're they're essentially blind for the first little bit, and they rely heavily on their parents to take care of them. They're about now eating 30% of their body weight in food every single day, and so they will grow, and at three months of age, they are at full grown size. Do they have names yet? They do not yet, so we do not know the sexes of them. So pretty interesting, penguins in general, you can't tell the difference between males and females just by looking at them. The only way that you can tell the difference is by DNA testing, so you can either take a feather or a blood sample and determine their sex that way. Explain to me the benefits of me putting on your gear. So we have gloves on, and that's gonna protect their little downy feathers that you can see from getting oil on them from our hands. Um, the sweatshirt is really for you because you can't smell it over there, but African penguin chicks do not smell fantastic. They're shedding these downy, downy feathers, they've got skin that's kind of coming off, and so you would be smelling all day long. Oh, yeah, right? And the smell he's talking about, you can smell it for sure. It's a cute smell though. Yeah, it's, it definitely, you can tell it's a stinky cute. Yes. You know, if you've ever smelled a pig, they stink cute until they get really big and they, then they stink stink. You think of Africa as a hot continent, but you think of penguins as a cold animal. Yeah, that's a common misconception. So there are 18 different species of penguins and most of them actually live in temperate climates. So you're only gonna find five or six species that actually live in the Antarctic Circle. The other guys all live on the beaches of New Zealand or Australia, South America, and these guys in Africa. All penguin species live below the equators. The Galapagos penguins live right there, so they may hop in the water on the other side of the equator. You know, it's an invisible line, so they don't really they don't know, know to stay in the south. Rusty. Yeah, but uh, no, all penguins do live in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, hi, hi kiddo. Oh. Yes, good girl. So this is Lulu. African penguins had been known as jackass penguins in the past because of that bray. It sounds very much like a donkey, uh, but now we call them African Let me penguins. interrupt you. These are jackass penguins. <laughs> they tricked us and they changed no, the name because they no, don't like the name. Not, you're not. You're not. No. <laughs> That's why they're called jackass penguins. They sound like a donkey. No, they were also known as black-footed penguins for a while because you can see their black feet. Other penguins have orange feet, some have pink feet, but we just call them African penguins. We do lots of training. We utilize enrichment a lot. Several reasons for doing that. One is we want to make sure that these guys are used to being handled, right? We want the uh, vet visits that they get periodically to not be stressful for them. So we train them to be able to accept tactile on the wings, on the back, on the beak, those kinds of things. Uh, we also want to make sure that they're mentally stimulated, that they're moving around, they aren't, they aren't getting bored, and so that's what enrichment does. Um, and training is a form of enrichment. It's a way to keep their minds fresh, keep their bodies fresh, um, and keep them moving around. Talk to me about the fact that you it's your job to make sure that she's having fun when she's out here. Yes. How do you know that? How do you, how do you know if she's decided that she doesn't want to be here anymore? <laughs> Except for walking to the door. <laughs> like, oh, I'm out. Yep, she kind of sig signified to me right there that she's, she's ready to go. You're ready to go uh, home. Keep it relatively short and sweet. So I'm just looking for good behavior and I don't necessarily want to push it. If I am happy with the way that they are doing something, whether I'm training behavior or they're in this space, I want to kind of capitalize on the fact that we're on a high note and end right there. share in the brooding process. So when uh, the female will sit on the nest while the male goes out, they find their favorite fishing hole, they could spend half a day to a full day out there, they come back, they relieve the female and the female goes out. The sad part about that behavior is because they're monogamous, because they pair up to uh, protect their eggs, uh, if something were to happen to mom or dad when they're out there, mom often just st sits and stays and never gets a chance to feed. So it's an interesting part of, of their biology. But one of the cool things and one of the reason that that doesn't happen is because these guys are fantastic in the water. One of their best 
predation defenses is their ability to basically fly in the water. If you ever see a penguin swim, you'll see it looks like they're flying, like look like they're, they are birds, but they're underwater. Their ability to turn very quickly and accelerate is how they stay away from their predators. So if you have a predator like a sea lion who's coming to get them, what they're gonna try to do is turn rapidly and go the opposite direction. They are lighter and they are faster than their predators. Now, who is this? This is Rafiki. Rafiki. So Rafiki is just about a year and a half old. He just finished his first molt, so he's got those adult feathers, the black and white feathers that people are accustomed to when they see the penguins. There's been a 90% decline over the last 100 years. There are only about 50,000 African penguins left um, out on the beaches of South Africa, so hopefully those numbers increase. Yeah, I know you guys have a lot of connections to wild uh, African penguins, and w talk about the programs that you guys get involved with. So one of the big organizations that we work with is SANCOB, which is based in South Africa. And so it is an organization that rescues, rehabilitates, and releases African penguins as well as other seabirds in that particular area. So we are able to send funds and also send staff there to help out with chick bolstering and whatever else they need during those, those times of need. Penguins, once they hatch from their egg, they are generally cared for their parents for up to three months. And at that point, parents kick them out of the nest and they no longer recognize their parents as their parents. They no longer recognize their siblings as siblings. So his parents might be out on habitat and they have no connection whatsoever. He also has a brother who was hatched three days before him. Um, and so they were raised together when they were little, but after that, like, they will kind of hang out on the same side and see each other, but they, they don't recognize each other as siblings and there's no familial bond at that point. Um, but penguins do have this desire to be monogamous and made up with a pair. And so over time, he will find another penguin and that bond will be sealed and they'll hang out together. They'll be buddies forever. Yeah. Rafiki, I hope you pick well. So the personality is different just like you and me and everybody else we know. Um, I always like to relate this to people's pets. You know, lots of people have dogs and lots of people have cats, but no two cats and dogs are exactly the same. They're all very, very different. Some of them are seeking out our attention. Some of them want to hop in our lap and cuddle. And penguins and a lot of other bird species can actually tell the difference between individuals. They have got great vision, and so they can distinguish individuals uh, just on the way that we look. So they may treat me differently than they treat you, right? They know that you're a stranger, and they know that they see me every day. So they all treat us all differently. So he's playing favorites, even though you're not supposed to have favorites. I mean, he's. He's kind of hovering over by you. Well guys, I hope you learned something. I hope you had a lot of fun. If you have any comments, please uh, put them down below. We'll see you next time.